here in Lima and tonight we are going out for anticuchos, which are cow hearts. I know this sounds a little bit unusual, but it's actually really tasty. So we've come to a popular place. It's called Lagrimanesa. We've already placed our order. Let's go get our cow heart. Whatever they've used, like it does, it, the heart doesn't taste like an organ or, or anything I know unusual. Exactly. Normally, when I have organs, they're really tough and chewy, but this is like yeah. as tender of meat as you're gonna find. And we got one more side to go along with the anticucho. What are you having? This is called chopin, and it's a kind of giant corn, which is unique to Peru. Yeah, let's see if we can get a good shot of those kernels mm. because they're bigger than my nails. I know, they're, they're massive, like they are really big. Yeah. Huge. And the taste is great. So it's quite sweet. Yeah. But it's also kind of fibrous too. Mm. It's very chewy. And price point for anybody who's willing to try cow's heart. The cow's heart, all the side dishes and the drinks, it came to 33 soles, which is just over 10 US dollars. Not bad value. We're full. We're going for more of an upscale dining experience. We were having lunch at a place called La Rosa Nautica, which means the nautical rose. And it's a really cool restaurant out on the water. There's this pier built over the ocean and it just leads you all the way to this little restaurant. So you're like surrounded by waves, there's surfers, birds, perfect setting. And the food here is really good. Been here once before many, many years ago. So I'm excited to come back with more mature taste buds. So our food has arrived and we went all out. We got a little bit of everything. So I'm having the starter tasting menu over here, which comes with three different types of ceviche, which I love. And Sam is having the grand tasting menu and his appetizers have also arrived and they're looking pretty fancy. First up, this one is espigón, and this one is flounder. It's made with flounder. Is it a ceviche? It is a ceviche, yes. And let's just dip it in the sauce. Mm. Oh, wow. Mm. It's some of the best ceviche I've ever had. The fish just, it's so, so tender. And the sauce, it has a really strong kick of lime, like, 
There's nothing subtle about it. Mm, looks good. Moving on to the next. Have a look here. This one is called Colorado and it has also flounder, shrimp, and a little bit of squid. And it also has the, the yellow corn. The choclo. The choclo. Let's grab some choclo. I'm expecting this to be spicy. It already has a lot of sauce, so I won't be adding any more. Oh, yeah. I always expect squid to be a little bit chewy, but this is great. Made to perfection. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this so far. And we've got one more, the last one. This one has flounder, octopus, and a cilantro sauce. And it has the canchita that we tend to find in lots oh, of places. That we, that we love that. Yeah, that makes an appearance That's at salty most tables. corn. Yeah. It's a nice mix of soft and crunch, and the sauce is refreshing. Really nice to be too. All right, Sam. So let's have a look at your plate. Oh, exciting time! So I've got a, a three-portion appetizer sampler mm -hmm. as well. What are you starting? With? And we're gonna start off with the gausa, the gausa. yellow mashed potatoes, mm -hmm. and this comes with a tuna tartare and a smoked with smoked chili peppers and avocado. So. I love tuna tartare, so I'm going to be trying some of that later. I bet it's magic. Magic in the mouth. Like those are three really amazing things all at once. Mm -hmm. I love gausa, the potatoes, then you add that nicely sliced avocado and then the tartare. Oh yeah. Ooh, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, let's move on to Okay, moving next on. Room. This is the classic ceviche. Yeah. So yeah, this is what we love to eat here in Peru and especially Lima. The one meal that we probably have more than any any other is ceviche. So I feel like we have it every other day when we're in Peru. It's just ceviche, ceviche, more ceviche. That's the most tender ceviche I've ever had. Yeah, isn't it? I don't know what they do to make it this tender, but it's just amazing. You don't even really have to chew it. Yeah, it's got and a special the, the, touch. The sauce is just, oh wow. Oh, and then, wow. okay, moving on to the last one here. Okay. This is the octopus salad. Ooh. And it also comes with toasted yuca, which Ooh. is is a pretty unique thing. That's kind of like a root. Yeah, root it's kind potato. of like a root, similar to a potato. And it also comes with olive sauce. We were reading the menu so, over there. <laughs> kind of cheating a bit. <laughs> kind of cheating a little bit here. So the next course has arrived and now I'm going to be sampling three different types of gausa. So gausa is a type of dish that's made with yellow mashed potato and it's usually served kind of like a shepherd's pie but this is a bit fancier so we have nice little swirls of yellow potato and I'm having three different types. The one you see over here with the shrimp is called arequipeña. Um, and it has a nice ocopa, creamy sauce. And then if we move over to the middle, this one is made with oliveto. So it's octopus and olive sauce. And at the very end, you have one with tuna and a chili pepper cream. Wow. So, so which one do you start with? Let's start with tuna. I tried Sam's tuna. You seem to tuna. be a big fan of tuna. Yeah. Oh wow, it looks like the tartare too. Oh, magic, look at that. Getting it. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh man. There may not be any left over for you. This fish, it just melts in your mouth. It's so good. Mm. Okay, shall we move on to the next one? Yes. So this is our octopus here. Let's see. You know, I've become a pretty big fan of octopus ever since we've been in Lima. They really know how to prepare it well. You didn't like it so much in Korea. No, <laughs> but here, totally different story. So yeah, that's good. And you really taste the olive oil. They've used it so smooth, like it leaves a nice little aftertaste. And this. Last but not least. How shall I do this? Just bite it off? Yeah, 
Just dunk it in and bite it off. Okay, let's get the shrimp. Mmm. Oh, that's fresh. It tastes like the ocean. So which of the three did you like the most? The tuna? Probably tuna. I just love tuna. I can't get enough of it. Mm. So what is next on the menu? And the last of your sampler portion has arrived. These mm -hmm. are the carpaccios. So okay. let's just take a look down at those. So over here, we have got salmon and with green onions, a vinaigrette with a quail egg. Ooh. Yeah, that's pretty fancy. fancy. Over here, tuna and a mustard sauce with also soy sauce and sesame seeds. That you can see good. the sesame seeds there. And finally, we've got flounder with basil oil and black salt. Ooh. So. Salmon is pretty much my favorite fish, so I think I'm gonna try that one last. So we will start off with the flounder. Sam always leaves the best for last. Yeah, that is my way of doing things when I eat. <laughs> mm, that's good. that's uh, sour. And um, it tastes actually, it tastes quite similar <coughs> to ceviche. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah, it's the same fish they use for our ceviche today. Well, the that, there you go. There you go. That there answers you go. the question. There you go. Okay, on to the tuna. And what I want to make sure is I get lots of the sesame sauce and sesame seeds. What you want to make sure is that you leave some for me. Oh. <laughs> That's the best thing I've tried here so far. Like, it's just a combination of that amazing tuna and then you mm. have this tangy sesame sauce which is really rich and creamy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah he says. Alright. And now last, your favorite. Last but not least, let's move on to the salmon. Grew up eating a lot of salmon on Vancouver Island where I'm from in Canada. So this will be familiar and tasty. That is fresh, that is tender, and that is just, that's just very high quality salmon. I love this. So the food just keeps on coming. This is Sam's main, and again, it's a sampler with three different dishes. So we'll have a look down here. First up, we are having lomo saltado, which is one of the, the national dishes, I guess you could say. Um, so it's kind of like a fried beef with onions, tomato, and there's yellow potato french fries underneath. Then we are moving over to the shrimp with taku taku. Now that is and a big shrimp. Yeah, it's massive. Or like a prawn. And the taku taku is basically rice and fried beans. And last but not least, we've got the catch of the day, a pan fried white fish with some potatoes and a creamy sauce. So yeah, lots of food. So you're going with the lomo saltado first. Lomo saltado, so I got a little piece of meat. Maybe let's grab a potato. <gasps> oh my gosh, I spilled. I spilled, don't let them see. I couldn't get the potato. Let's just go for the beef. Mm. Wow. You know what? That sauce, it almost has a bit of a Chinese influence. It's really interesting. I don't think I've ever tried lomo saltado in Peru before. This may be my first. My yellow potato fry. Mm. Good stuff. Now let's clean up my mess before they come. There we go. All clear. Okay, moving on. Mm. I'm just gonna cut off a piece so you get some as well. Please, so. that's the one I'm looking forward <laughs> to the most. Bit of shrimp, rice, and beans. Whoa. Amazing. Mm. It's nice. It almost tastes a little bit Mexican. The refried beans and rice. It's good. Good combo. And I'm gonna move on to the fish. She's excited about the fish. I sure am. Let's get a bit of sauce. 
I'm not sure what this sauce is. So let's see on the menu. A leek sauce. That's what it is. Leek. There we go. Mm. It's so creamy and smooth. That's good. I think we're gonna remember this meal, huh? Forever and ever. Forever and ever. So I'm getting pretty sad over here because it's almost time to wrap up this meal. I know, we're already full, but dessert has arrived and we will be making room for it because Ooh, yes. everything at this restaurant has just been incredible so far. So let's have a look at dessert. So take a look down here and you're gonna see first that this is a chocolate, crunchy chocolate mousse. Yes. Okay. And then yes. over here we have Pont de Racion, which is kind of like I think a crispy pancake with vanilla, manhar, and strawberries, so vanilla sauce. And this is the one I'm most interested in trying. This is a chocolate tart with lucuma mousse. And that is like one of my favorite local fruits here in Peru. So We've got a nice spread of desserts. It's time to dig in. Dig in. Which one's first? All right. I'm going to try. Let's go over here first. And we will try the crunchy chocolate mousse with berries. So. I yep. wonder if that's coconut on top. Ooh, I can, I can definitely feel the crunch at the bottom here. Let's try that. Wow. That mousse is really light and it's really rich. And I have no idea what that crunchy thing, crunchiness at the bottom is, but it's tasty. It tastes a bit like granulated sugar, but I know it's not that. Okay, time to try that pancake. And I don't have a knife anymore. Oh, it is crunchy. Okay, so that just broke off nicely. Ooh, oh, we someone's can hear happy birthdays in the background. Someone's having a birthday. This is a, a great place for a birthday. <laughs> yeah, I kind of feel like this is this should be both of our birthdays mm. <laughs> in advance. Mm. Okay, that's really crunchy when you first bite into it, but then it's light. It disintegrates in your mouth, and the manhar sauce. The vanilla sauce is just very, very light, and the strawberries kind of just add a nice, like, juicy kick at the end. Ooh. And now, on to the one you're most yes. looking forward to. So, as you know by now, I saved my, my favorite one. For the and look at all that manhar. Oh, look at no, all that. No, that's lucuma, isn't it? Oh, sorry, sorry, what am I saying? Lucuma. Lucuma <laughs> filling, but maybe lucuma. that's not had on the, on the plate. Oh. Oh. That's the best. That's the best. <laughs> oh yeah. That the filling is almost like it's a combination of, of tasting like like that the actual fruit and also tastes like like a creamy butterscotch pudding as well. Oh that's good. Well, hello, Captain. Time to resume my captain duties over here. <laughs> so, was that one of the best meals you've ever had or what? Yeah, that ranks up there really, really highly. I mean, it's certainly the fanciest meal we've ever had in Lima or in Peru, for that matter. And, you know, the price reflected that, though. The price of what I ordered, which included the appetizers, the mains, and the desserts, was 160 soles. And your appetizer portion, which had three different things, it had the gausses, the ceviches, and the other part, that was 80 sole. So in total, it was a 250 sole meal. That's quite a bit. You're looking at, you know, 70, 80 US dollars, but it was so worth it. It's a dining experience we'll never forget. lunch we are eating at a place that's been recommended by my aunt this is called La Picanteria and basically you come here you order a whole fish and you have it prepared four different ways so apparently we're gonna be getting a soup ceviche I think some grilled fish skin and a few other things so that should be pretty exciting I'm really looking forward to eating this and the cool thing is they're letting us take a little sneak peek behind the kitchen so let's go have a tour right now The first part 
part of our fish has arrived. If you take a look down here, you'll see that half of it was prepared as a ceviche. So this is ceviche with rocoto, which is like a hot red pepper, a little bit of seaweed on here. We have our sweet potato, some red onions, and aside from the ceviche, this is called chicharron. And they basically took the skin of the fish um, and put it in a batter and fried it. So I'm gonna eat some fish skin right now. And that looks good. Oh wow. Mmm. Never had fish skin like this before. This is amazing. This is so good. Wow. <laughs> Honestly, I thought it was gonna be kind of gross eating fish skin, but it's almost like eating fried chicken skin. I don't know if that's weird for you, but I like it. And now it is time for Sam to try the ceviche. Yes, you got to try the chicharron, so that means I get first dibs at, of the ceviche. And, and look at this. This looks amazing. Colors. You know, the colors look amazing. That there's is like so fresh. generous amounts of onions, and you can tell that there's the, the tiger's milk here at the bottom. So. Mm. We've now had ceviche in several countries and nothing beats Peruvian ceviche. This is just the best. I love Peruvian ceviche. So sour, you've got like the tender taste of the fish and then the onions as a compliment. It's just delicious. Amazing balls. I can't wait to dig in. That looks fabulous. And before we even finished our ceviche and chicharron, check out this. Our second dish has arrived. More food. Okay, so this one is called Jaladito Norteño. And if you have a look here, it's basically like these really thin strips of fish. Um, and it has a yellow ají sauce, kind of like a yellow pepper. We have some chives here, a bit of olive oil. That sauce looks amazing. It looks great. Let me try this. Ooh la la. Are you getting this? Mm. Wow. It's really nice. Like the the sauce they've used. Kind of like a, a chili and an olive oil mixed together. Let's see if you can get a shot of that. And it's really nice. I've never had raw fish with um, with olive oil before, but I am a fan. Mm. Let's get a close up of that. Yeah. Wow. And then on the other side of this pan, we have more of the chicharron, more fried fish skin, um, as well as a little bit of corn, maíz. Is that the canchita? Yeah, just prepared a different way. Mm. I'm really enjoying this experience so far. This is pretty cool. Like, they're not going to waste any part of this fish because I think next up we're getting a soup. So yeah, we should probably start eating a Man, little faster. We are going to be stuffed by the end of this meal. And what are you doing now? Man, I can't let any of that leche de tigre, the tiger's milk, go to waste. So sour, so spicy. I think this is the most sour tiger's milk I've ever had out of ever having ceviche. Mm -hmm. And there's still more left. Keep working at it. <laughs> None of that will go to waste, friends. So let's just take a minute here to talk about this spicy canchita. How good is it? Yes, we love the spicy canchita. It's the basically the fried corn that's heavily salted. But what makes this one unique at this particular restaurant is I don't know if you can see this I'm gonna to try to pull out but if you look at my hand here it's got chilies yes it's got chilies this is the spiciest canchita we've ever had like we were snacking on this before we got our beverages and we're like yeah. <laughs> our mouths were like, on fire we need our water <laughs> but it's so good so yet another dish has arrived. This one is called Jalea Norteña. If you take a look down here, it's uh, a fish that has been marinated in this sauce. I'm not sure what it's made of, but it has a beautiful color. And under the fish, you're gonna find sweet potato. And they also have duca, which is kind of like this fibrous root that we don't really have in North America, but it's delicious. Um, and yeah, yeah that's we've got, very Peruvian. It is. And on top we have some red onions and it looks wonderful. So let's just dig into this. 
Look at that. It's still steaming. This is still piping hot. <laughs> Don't want to burn myself again on camera. Mm. That's nice. It's almost like a sweet glaze. I really like that. And if you take a look here, you can see it still has the fish skin on it. And it's a little bit crispy. So yeah, it's a really nice combination. The fish is super, super tender. It just melts in your mouth. So let's try and get a bit of everything for this next bite. Look at that. Wow, even yuca and kamote. Yuca, sweet potato and fish. Mm. That's real good. So the food just keeps on coming. You better believe it. This is dish number four. And if we take a look down here, we'll see that we've got grilled fish this time. And it has the ahi sauce and the sliced spring onions. And it appears to be massive yuca wedges. They're not even fries, they're more like wedges. So time to try that. I'm going to take a little bit of the yuca wedge and I'm going to take a bit of the fish here. Oh yeah! <laughs> it's just amazing. Out of all the fish we've tried, I'd say that's the most tender. And then you have the, the spiciness of the heat, like heat sauce. And then the yuca chip as, as a complimentary this is just an amazing meal and I don't even think we're done yet. Yeah, and let me just point out that this place has filled up so quickly. There is no space left in the whole restaurant. Everyone's eating here. That's when you know it's good. More food. And now for the grand finale, we have a fish soup, which looks pretty good. Let's take a look over here. We've got the fish's head and I guess some bones. We've got the tail. So yeah, let's have some fish soup. That's another first. Let's pour it in. Dish it up. Dishing it up. Would you like the fish eyeball, Sam? Oh yes. The fish's I've eyeball. Special reservation for me with that one. Or the tail. Which one do you think you is the tastier? You get the tail, I'll take the eyeball. Okay, let's see if I can fish it out. I'm trying here. I'm really trying. Wow. Oh, that's huge. It's still attached. Never mind. It's your lucky day, Sam. You just get soup. No tail. So, I do believe this is the final dish now. The soup. How does it taste, Sam? Sour, a bit salty. Yeah, you can taste that fish as well, too. Yeah, it is the key ingredient. Oh, and spicy, too. Spicy, spicy soup. So in terms of price point, that was 162 solings. And as of today, that is exactly 50 US dollars. So it's $25 per person. So it's not the cheapest meal, but I would still say it's really good value considering how much food we got. Like, I am beyond stuffed. It's time to go home and just pass out on the couch. Yeah, and we should also mention, this is a very trendy place at the moment. It is time for another food video and today we are going to be trying something that's called gausa. Gausa, it's kind of like a shepherd's pie if you haven't tried it before. It's made with yellow mashed potato and you can get lots of different fillings. So we've ordered two different varieties and that should be coming soon and it's going to be delicious. I love gausa. And while we wait... While we wait, while we wait, we're going to have our favorite snack. Kanchita, which is the fried corn with salt on top of it. Yeah. Oh, I'm loving this stuff. And I'm always amazed by the size of these kernels. Seriously, it never gets old. Look at that. I know, they're just, they're gigantic. Massive. They're like twice the size of what, what we're used to having back at home in Canada. Oh, 
The Kelsa has arrived and it is a thing of beauty. How excited are you for your food, Sam? Yeah, it looks like artwork. I almost feel guilty talking into it. <laughs> almost. Almost. Okay, so let's talk about the key ingredients that make up Gausa. So you have your yellow potato. Yep. Um, lime and ahi, which is the yellow hot pepper. Yep. And in terms of fillings, you can have lots of different ones. So Sam went with the classic, yeah. which has... Mine has chicken. And you can also see that there's uh, some avocado here on the avocado. side as well. So let's and that looks like some mayo, a mayo sauce on top. All right, I'm just going to dig right in, going right to the bottom. Ooh. It's like cutting into a tower. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is really good. Yeah. 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 And with this particular gaza, it's really salty. You can tell they've added a lot of salt to it. But it's just like, when you get that much yellow potatoes, it's just, oh man, it's so good. It's almost like having like mum's mashed potatoes back <laughs> home or something. But with much better dressings, you know, with the, with the chicken and the sauce and, and the avocado. Oh man, that's good. Okay, and let's talk about the chicken. Is it shredded chicken like the one we had in Ajilina, yeah, or is it, it kind of chunky? No, it, 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 is, it is shredded chicken. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. One more bite for quality control. Research purposes. <laughs> that's good stuff. And I am beyond excited for mine because I saw causa acevichada on the menu, and that is a ceviche causa. Look wow. at that. So I've got my my fish, a little bit of fish that's been kind of cooked in lime. I have my red onions. I have my hot chili peppers. And of course, my, my yellow mashed potato with a bit of mayo. Super fancy over I there. I know. And if you know how much I love ceviche, like this is just the perfect dish for me. Really. You're doing a good job, job of uh, toppling it though already. I don't know why I'm blowing on my food. That's such a habit. I'm like, <laughs> it's cold. It's a cold dish. Mm. Oh yeah. The best of both so worlds. So good. <laughs> the lime. So much lime. And it's so tangy. A little spicy. And those little pieces of red hot chili. Mmm, this is my favorite. I haven't even tried yours, but I know this is my favorite. Mm. So it would appear Sam has food envy. So I'm reaching across the table to grab some of Audrey's. Yeah, mine looks so you know good. What? You can't I, resist. I do like mine, but I can't, I can't leave this restaurant without at least trying them on the ceviche too. Well, what wow. do you think? Wow, I've never had gausa with ceviche, so this is this is a really unique experience for me. I love it. I mean, I think I pref I do prefer yours to mine too. Yeah. yeah. And another thing I love about this dish about gausa, it's all the colors. Like, look at that: the bright yellows, the purple from the onion, the red. It's got lots of greens. It's just such a colorful meal. It's an attractive meal. It's art on a plate. Art on a plate. There you go. Okay, so it is now time for price point. So in terms of price point, that came to 45 soles, which is 13 US dollars. Not bad value. We're both leaving really full. Mm -hmm. And what's kind of funny is that this is typically served as an appetizer, not as a main. Yeah. But if you eat it one per person, it totally can be a main. It's so filling. I it's mean, it's potato. Yeah. That's it, heavy. It's very carb intensive. So if you're in Lima or Peru, definitely check out Gauza. It's something we highly recommend. attempt to eat kui or a guinea pig was a bit of a flop so we tried again tonight we finally found a restaurant that's open and serving guinea pig so yeah we've placed our order and we're sitting here just waiting for our first kui meal this is a first for both me and sam okay so time to spew off a few facts about guinea pig yeah so the kui is something we've been wanting to try for a while now mm -hmm. it is one of the most traditional peruvian foods you can possibly get it originates from the andes it's a rodent and apparently the meat is very high in protein and low in cholesterol. 
So it's healthy for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who would have known? This is a perfect meal to have just before our hike to Machu Picchu. Yeah. So another fun fact, because I know you guys really like those, is that if you visit Cusco Cathedral, once you go inside, you'll see that there's a painting of Jesus and the 12 disciples enjoying their last supper. And guess what they're eating? It's a guinea pig and it's lying on its back with its little paws up in the air. So if guinea pig is good enough for Jesus and his disciples, we can certainly eat it while we're in Cusco. And they were kind enough to let us go take a look at how it's being cooked and prepared. So let's go walk over and check out the wood fire burning oven. Just over there, just over there. That's where Kui is being made. dinner has arrived and I'm trying not to look at the guinea pig in the face because it kind of reminds me of my sister's two pet chinchillas but there it is on the plate and it comes with a few sides so if you look down here you can see that we have some golden potatoes some fried fried yellow potato actually and we have a little salad and we also have a stuffed pepper with cheese melted over top so yes, I guess the next step is to dig into our kui. So our server has kindly chopped up the kui because we didn't really know where to begin and apparently you have to eat this with your hands. Yes, so I'm gonna grab just a chunk here mm. and it's time for the first bite. Is that like the back? Kind of good. The meat's quite tender. You know what? It, it tastes it tastes a lot like chicken. Hmm. If I didn't know what I was eating, I would have guessed it was chicken. That's good to know. Makes me feel a little better about taking my first bite. <laughs> I think I have the back and the hind leg. I'm just taking little nibbles. Aww. How's it taste? It's like stringy, chewy chicken. Yeah. Like, it even looks like chicken, like the dark meat on a chicken. So, you could fool me, but I've seen the whole guinea pig on the plate. So now I know what I'm having. And you just kind of have to get over that because it doesn't make a bit of an impression on you. Especially if you have chinchillas for pets because they just look so similar. So moving on, we're kind of, you know, uh, taking a bite of its midsection here. Okay. So what, what you really notice about when you have guinea pig is that the skin is really crispy, mm -hmm. but the meat inside is quite tender. And I actually like it. We're also noticing that there are some organs and bones and... Yeah, yeah, like it's... It, strange it, it, things inside our coolie. It's very much cooked as it is and yes. uh, you eat it as it's presented. Yes. That is how you have kui in Peru. Except you're using cutlery instead of your hands. You have it all, all wrong. Right. That's right. So now the verdict. If you saw kui on a menu, would you order it again? I'm not necessarily sure I would, just because it is a bit expensive. And I think that if you were to have something like chicken or something, you might get a little bit more meat. But I'm really glad I tried it. It tasted honestly better than I expected. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, if you're in Peru, definitely try it though at least once. And your final verdict? Well, it didn't taste bad. But that being said, I'm not sure I would eat it again. I just don't like seeing the whole animal on my plate. And I know that's kind of silly to say because I do eat meat, I do eat fish. So it doesn't make sense to just eliminate guinea pig. But yeah, not for me. Not for me. So today's video is going to be a bit of a loud one. We're sitting at a restaurant here in Iquitos called Ari's and it's right across from Plaza de Armas and there is a lot of tuk-tuk traffic rushing by but we're gonna be waiting for a dish we're having something called Juane and it takes 45 minutes to prepare now this is a very special dish and it's meant to resemble the head of John the Baptist on a platter so I think it's certainly worth waiting for here in the heat but in the meantime we'll be trying some fresh juices as well as some starters You can see 
but Sam is sweating big time over here. It's a little bit gross, like honestly. Yeah, so we have so, to get you a refreshing drink. Yeah, we're trying to take care of that by getting something called a cremolata, and that's a little bit like like kind of a fruit slushy, a fruit smoothie. Yeah. And we're trying a, a really regional fruit. It's called Camu Camu. And it's cool because when we were cruising down the Amazon, we got to visit some land and some villages that had the camel camel plant. And it's kind of like, it's shaped really small. It's like sort of like a small little ball. I heard our guy kind of refer to it as, looks like a bit like a yellow tomato, and it's really sour. So. Super sour. Super sour. So we'll see if this in cremolata form lives up to its actual fruit. Well, what do you think? It is sour, but it's more sweet. It's very, yeah. su very sugary. Lots of sugar has been added. Yes, that's the most dominant ingredient here. Yeah, super concentrated camu yeah. camu. Then it's a little bit syrupy. until the Juana gets here and I am having patacones so if you take a look down here it's basically the plantain and it's been kind of like smashed down flat and then fried and it comes with a, a sauce here this looks like the huancaina sauce this is piping hot man mm. how's that? that's nice it's a little salty. Ow! It's like a savory plantain, but it's so, so hot. And if you take a look at the sauce over here, I'm just going to add some of this. Apparently, this is ahi. I've never seen it looking green before, but it should be good. A bit of spice. So that's more of a savory, salty uh, snack dish, isn't it? Oh, it's spicy. I'm just burning up here. Like, I don't know if it's the heat or the spice or what, but I'm like on fire. And what did you get? And I'm having maduros. Take a look down here. And that's like the slices of plantain. And unlike yours, which is a savory plantain dish, this is super sweet. So. So it gets its name Maduro because it's super ripe. Oh man, this is so good. I love how, yeah exactly, how, how ripe these are and how sweet they are. If I just had a little bit of rum sauce to pour on, that would make the best dessert ever, seriously. One of the reasons it's so loud outside is that there was a rally that just happened. The presidential elections are coming up in a little while and there were some Keiko supporters out there. It's really typical of the region, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. And I think we can see why it took so long to prepare. Look at look at the detail here. Yeah. That's so inside it's rice, chicken, a boiled egg, and black olives. That is a huge portion. Like yeah. seriously. That is enough for two people to share. And we've already been eating a lot of food. Yep. Alright, time to dig in and try that. So looking down here. I've got a piece of something. Apparently it's chicken. It does not look like chicken to me, but <laughs> Yeah, it's just the dark part of the chicken. It's a dark darker meat. it's a darker meat of the chicken. Mm. That's really good. Savory, salty, and you can taste a lot of the different herbs that have been mixed in with the rice. Time for your first bite. Mm, okay. 
I'm gonna go for the egg and the rice. Egg and rice combo coming up. Yeah. Ooh, big bite. But I like it. Yeah. Oh. Really nice. There's a lot of spices mixed in with the rice, so it's actually like really quite savory and salty like you were saying. And also, another interesting fact about this dish is that it used to be really popular with travelers who are going on long journeys because, because of the way it's packaged basically, it travels really well and it can last a long time. So yeah, I like this. Honestly, it seems like the kind of dish you'd want to eat on a cold day back at home. You know, it's like really hearty and savory, but it's so freaking hot here, so I'm not yeah, sure. I was gonna say, I don't think there's too many of those kind of days over here in Iquitos. But it's nice. I would recommend trying it if you find yourself here. And someone over here simply could not resist dessert. Yeah, we decided we're gonna order something and we wanted to try something we've never had before. So we got something called leche asada. Yeah. And apparently it is a milk-based dessert that's been cooked in the oven. And you can see like the top part is caramelized kind of. So let's dig in. Ooh, it has a consistency kind of, sort of like a rice pudding or like maybe a flan. What's that like? But it's just milk apparently. It's really sweet. Yeah? And milky. Uh, <laughs> Surprise! And last but not least, let's talk about the price of this meal. Yeah, so our feast of feast is over and that came to 45 soles. And we ordered way too much food. Like we are bringing the main dish home, at least over half of that. So it was a lot of food that included the drink, that included the two plantain dishes, the main and the dessert. And that came to 45 soles, which is about 13, 14 US dollars. So pretty cheap when you consider how much food we had. And I have to admit that this restaurant has massive portions. So if you're coming here, you want to kind of come as a group and share your dishes. finally made it to the Amazon jungle and we are starting our trip out in Iquitos. It is lunchtime right now and we are starving from a full day of travel. So we found a little place. It is called, what's the name of this? The Yellow Rose of Texas, which I know does not sound very Peruvian, but they specialize in food from the Amazon region. We've ordered some paiche, which is a traditional fish from this area, and we're going to be having it two different ways, so the food will be coming soon. Gracias. So Sam over here has been pretty excited about trying baiche ever since my grandma told him about it, about this fish from the jungle. So what can you tell us about it? Yes, so I've been researching a little bit <laughs> online about it. So it is native to the Amazon, which mm -hmm. is really cool. And it's huge fish. It's In fact, it's one of the biggest freshwater fish in the world. It can grow up to three meters mm -hmm. in length. And gracias. Gracias. <laughs> and something else really cool is that it's called a bony tongue fish. And its tongue is thought to have medicinal properties Ooh. by natives. So. I wonder what kind of properties. <laughs> yeah. So for our beverage, we asked the waitress what's the traditional juice we can have and she suggested Cocona. Yeah, Cocona. And which we've never heard of before. Never heard of before and... We're not sure there's even an English equivalent for this. There probably isn't. Yeah. And we're not necessarily the most adventurous travelers, but we are adventurous with our taste buds. Yes. So we will try this here. Always with food. Mmm, smells kind of citrusy. Well, oh wow, it's super sweet. It kind of has like, it, it's really strange. It kind of has almost like a, a milky taste as well. Like, mm. And it has a strong sort of nectar taste. Like it's, it's almost a little bit like a pineapple, but something a lot milkier. Ooh. Yeah. That's interesting. Wow, I do like it though. So now my dish is here and I'm going to be trying something called patarrasca de paiche. And if you take a look at my plate, it's basically the, the paiche served as a filet. It's been cooked, kind of like steamed in this sleeve. 
and on top of the fish you can see some onions, tomatoes, and it also has a little bit of cilantro. We've got some lime here, which we can try and squeeze. Squeeze that on. That's a little messy. I've got most of it on my fingers, like lotion. Uh -huh. And then I also have this spicy ahi sauce. So you know how we ordered a juice of cocona? This is the fruit it's made with and they've also used it to make a, a spicy ahi. So this is like a spicy sauce but that also has the same fruit in it. Um, so yeah, let's just load it up. It's be great, it? Yeah. Oh yeah, just load it up on there. I like my spice. Load that spicy up. So okay. let's see. So let's try a bite. I wonder if it has bones or is this is this a boneless fish? I forget. It probably does have bones. Big bite here. Mmm. How's that? That yeah, is really good, you know? We were saying the bite was a little bit chewy with the, the chicharron, the fried one, but it is so soft with you if you have it steamed. Like it just breaks apart with your fork. And I really like that you can taste the, the cilantro because that's one of my favorite spices ever. Or herbs rather. Going in so, for yeah. a second bite. That's mm. how we know it's good. It is wonderful. I'm loving it. Chicharron de paiche. Yeah. Look at so that. So the paiche chicharron. So I've just got myself a piece here. And as you can see, it's, it's breaded. And it's just time to, to try that. Breaded and fried. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Really, really crispy on the outside. And it's strange. It almost tastes a little bit more like chicken than it does typical fish. Yeah. It's it's a bit of a chewier fish, wouldn't it you is. say? It really is. It's it's like it's something in between the texture of a fish and, and a piece of chicken. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's really unique. I guess it's a, it's quite a large mm. fish, so the meat is probably a bit tougher for that reason. And it came with some red onions, yep. which I love. But over there in the back, we have maduros fritos. And maduros fritos are basically like plantain. Like yeah. sweet, ripe plantain that's been sliced and fried. I can't wait to try this. Oh. Wow. Wow, that is amazing. Mm -hmm. Really, really sweet. And it's not crispy at all. It's fried just so that you kind of, I think it brings out more of the sweetness of the plantain. Yeah, it's almost a little bit caramelized. It I is. Think. I mean, this almost feels like I'm having a, like, a little bit of dessert with my Ooh. fish. We almost forgot the yuca fries. Yeah, so this came with the chicharron. We were able to order a side. And yuca, it's kind of like, like a root, a very fibrous root, almost like a potato. And it's yellow and it's cooked fried here. It's really good. They're like, Almost like wedges, so they're like super, super thick fries. Bigger yeah. than our fingers. Goes really well with the bite chip for sure. So this is what we call the sign of a satisfying meal. Empty plates. Be sure to take care of that. This was my first time trying food from the Amazon, food from the Peruvian jungle. I have loved this meal. It's been amazing and I can't wait to see what we have next for dinner and lunch tomorrow and then dinner and then the following day. It's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> Loving it. We are going to be eating nothing but desserts. We're at a little place in Lima that's called La Tiendecita Blanca. And we're pretty sure this is actually a little Swiss cafe, not Peruvian. But they do have some Peruvian dishes here. So we've ordered Suspiro a la Limeña and Merengado de Chirimoda. And the last one is Torta Tres Leches, which I'm pretty sure was not invented in Peru, but you can find it almost everywhere. So we're going to be sampling those three today. It's going to be sugary. We are 
We're going to start out with the most authentic of all the three desserts. This one is called Suspiro a la Limeña, and that means the sigh of the woman from Lima. What a name for a dessert. Wow, seriously. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think I've ever you know, heard of a dessert that has quite a name like that. So this thing of beauty originated in the city of Lima in the 19th century. It's a very popular dessert. Yeah. And that looks good. And apparently it has manjar blanco, yeah. which is kind of like the dulce de leche of Peru. Mm -hmm. And it also comes with egg yolks. Egg yolks, not egg whites. <laughs> and what's the other one? It has vanilla essence. Vanilla essence. Oh my gosh, I can, I can remember two out of three today, it seems. Okay. Okay, let's try that. Mm. Mm, oh, that looks so thick. It looks so thick like a like a thick pudding. I've never had this before, so this is exciting. Oh, wow. That's like the best butterscotch pudding I've ever had in my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Wow, you really taste the, uh, the manjar blanco. Mm -hmm. It has a rich, like, kind of caramel, milk, milky kind of consistency. And it's really thick and creamy, but also extremely sweet. Like, this is just oh, so is jolted this, by the sugar. Is it a hot or a cold dessert? Because I haven't had any yet. It is. It's actually lukewarm. Lukewarm. It's actually lukewarm. Okay, so it's, it's served not at hot. Room temperature. Or, yeah, it's served at room temperature. And if you see this lovely little swirl on top, that is some meringue. And it looks a little bit purple because it's made with port wine. It has a tiny hint of port wine and then cinnamon on top. Wow. So this so. this is this is a decadent dessert. You're definitely gonna want to try if you're visiting Lima. Yeah. One more bite then. One more bite. One more bite. One more bite. Mm. Just to prove that. To prove that you really did enjoy it. Mm. Number two, we are having something called. Merengado de Chirimoya. Ooh la la. And don't be fooled by this little fruit on the side. This is not Chirimoya. Chirimoya is actually a big green fruit. It almost looks like a giant avocado, and inside it has a white flesh. So, yeah, that's in here, and it's been mixed with manjar blanco, which is similar to dulce de leche. Um, let's see if I can find some of it. Oh wow, that looks really thick and decadent. Yeah, so it's like fruit and manjar blanco served chilled with meringue on top. Mm. Yeah, it's a nice combination. Is the it fruit refreshing? Itself, it is refreshing because it's been served chilled. But the fruit itself, chirimoya, it doesn't have that strong of a flavor. So what I mostly taste is the manjar blanco and just like a hint of a tangy fruit in the back. And so yeah, it's nice. I wish I could find a good chunk of fruit, but it's like white. White and fleshy. It's kind of hard to see, but it is in there. So apparently Mark Twain once tried chirimoya and he said it was the most delicious fruit known to man. So that's high praise for chirimoya. And I think in English it's actually known as a custard apple. But I mean, I've never used that expression before. It just sounds wrong. <laughs> it does. What is a custard apple? So I don't know. But the dessert is good. I can recommend it. Oh, and did we mention that it has meringue on top? And the meringue, it also looks a little bit purple because they've added some port wine. So that's nice. Let's just break that apart. Look at that. Wow. Ooh la la. I know it looks messy, but it's good. And last but not least, we are having the non-Peruvian dessert, which is really popular in Peru. Yeah, the, tre so. the tres leches one. Yeah. And that means three different kinds of milk. So we've got the evaporated, mm -hmm. we've got the cream, and what's the other one? Condensed. Condensed. <laughs> I, I almost forgot. A lot of milks to remember. Yeah, it is. Let's dig right in. Time to dig in. And I can tell. At the bottom, it's already really soggy, so I think those trees leches are seeping down right to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> you really taste the different the different milks. Like that's the overwhelming thing. 
It's kind of different from a normal cake, which is dry. This is kind of a wet cake. Yeah. And yeah, you really taste the milk. It's very sugary too. Yeah. I have to say, yeah, I, I definitely like it. And if you take a closer look, you can actually see that it's a sponge cake. So it does a pretty good job of soaking those three milks. And on top we have some cream, some whipped cream, strawberries. strawberries. And this right here is called aguaymanto. Having trouble focusing, but there it is. So apparently there's no equivalent in English. I guess this is very Just Peruvian. In it Try it. Sweet or sour? That's the question. Ooh. Very sour. Very sour. Very sour. <laughs> Maybe a little too sour for my liking. <laughs> so the question is, are you on a sugar high or do you need a siesta? I'm on a sugar high. I should be like surfing on a pile of sugar. Forget, forget the water, forget the waves. Whipped cream waves. <laughs> Whipped cream waves, there you go. Anyways, let's talk about the price for those three desserts. So it was 48 pesos, which is just under 15 US. Pesos? What country oh are God. we in, Sam? 48 souls. Oh my God. 48 souls? You know what? We've, we've been in countries with pesos often, so oh my gosh. <laughs> I wake up and I don't know where I am. Okay, so 48 soles, which 48 is soles, which is just under 15 US dollars. Not bad value. I mean, you can get these desserts cheaper, but this is a little bit more of a fancy restaurant, and the quality here is excellent. Yeah. The, the food is really good. time to continue sampling some traditional dishes from the Amazon region. We found a random little restaurant just by chance and it's lunch time so we popped in and we've ordered a few different items and all of these dishes are going to be featuring either plantains or cecina which is a dry like dehydrated pork meat so it should be tasty. And we're having the same juice that we had yesterday, the Kokona. And I like to refer to this as the lemonade of the jungle. It's sweet and refreshing. So the food is here and first up we're going to be showing you Takacho y Cecina. So take a look down at the plate. This right here is takacho, and it's basically plantain. They fry it, then they mash it up together, oh, and they wow. kind of turn it into this big ball. And that is being served with a side of cecina, which is the, the pork meat, the dehydrated pork meat. And judging by the color, I would guess it's been marinated or, I don't know, soaked in some kind of sauce. So I'm gonna try the two of them together. A bit of both. Yeah, so for this meal, they came separately but you can also find takachu that already has the pieces of pork inside of it. Mm. Wow. Oh, it's really, really good. You get the sweetness of the plantain, but also the saltiness of the dehydrated meat. Now it's really, really tasty. Mm. So Sam, it is now your turn. Tell us what you're having. Yes, so I'm having the Cecina Chalfa. So basically, take a look down here, and you can see that I have strips of the pork as well. Yeah. But I, it's in the it's in a mixed rice form, like a Chinese yeah. style rice. And mine has eggs. It has chives. It has over here. There's plantains on the side. Ooh. So I'm gonna take a bite of that. Also grab some of the Cecina, and let's see how that tastes. That, that almost reminds me a little bit of bacon. Bacon, eh? Yeah, reminds me a little bit of bacon. That's really good. And the rice is delicious too. And what's awesome is that the portions at this restaurant are huge. Yeah, and you know what's kind of cool? I feel like with this meal, they're combining like the local cuisine from Iquitos, jungle food, with chifa, which is the Chinese influence, the fried rice. There you go. Yeah. Awesome fusion food. So I'm not sure if this is the way you eat it, but they brought us the ahi made with coconut. So it has the, the fruit, but it's like a spicy sauce. So I'm gonna put it on my plantain. I don't know if this is how the locals do it, but since I like my spice, that's how I'm going to do it. Let's grab a bite, big bite. 
A nice enhancement. Nice and spicy. Mmm. And it has a bit of vinegar and lime juice. It's really nice. And I also came with a salad. I've got some avocado. Looks nice and ripe. So yeah, I am loving this meal. Like the food here in Iquitos it's really cool because it's so fresh and they use a lot of vegetables and fruits. Delicious. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Very good. Very good. <laughs> yeah, and I felt like that's something that was almost lacking in Lima. We were starting to miss our fruits and veggies. So it's good to be here. So that was ridiculously amazing value for what we ate. I know, that feast of feasts only costs 31 soles and that includes everything. That massive jar of juice plus our two mains. So I mean you're talking less than 10 US dollars. Pretty darn good value if you ask me. First question of the day, how many Sams can you see in this shot? Got lots of reflections happening around here. <laughs> Anyways, for today's video, we are filming sandwiches triples, which are triple sandwiches. I guess these are going to have three layers of bread. And we're eating at one of our favorite eateries in all of Lima. This place is called Manolo. And they specialize in churros, but they also have these humongous sandwiches. So we're back here again. So Sam, can you count how many times we've been here already? I have no idea. I mean, the first time we came to Lima last year, I think this is the first restaurant we ever we ever went to together. Yeah. So that's kind of special. And we've had everything from sandwiches to lasagna to like just giant pieces of lemon meringue pie. And we've also had churros here as well. So we're going for the sandwiches right now. Our food has arrived and I asked our waiter, is this sandwich big enough to share between two people? And he was like, oh no, this is small, it's a personal size. Have a look at this. Are you kidding me? Personal size? That is massive. And that's not even the biggest one. The biggest one is, is the other it's one. the one chicken. you're having. And the other thing I'm noticing is that this only has two layers of bread. So I'm a bit confused because I, I assumed if it's called triple, it would have three layers of bread but apparently not so now we don't even know what a triple sandwich means maybe it's three ingredients who knows but this one's mine it has avocado ham and tomato so let's dig in I think it may be the case that there's the filling, like there's so many toppings and fillings put into the sandwich that there just is no room for an extra layer of bread. Exactly. That's that's a big mouthful right there. I'm dropping it all over me. Oh yeah, that's nice. I'm gonna grab my napkin and dab dab because I can feel I have mayo all over my face but yeah that's good it's a nice thick slice of fluffy white bread and I like that the slices of avocado and tomato are really thick So now it's your turn, Sam. Tell us what's in your sandwich. Yes, and mine is very similar to yours, except for the fact that it has a generous amount of chicken stuffed inside too. So let's not delay, I'm just gonna bite right in. So that is shredded chicken, avocado, and tomato. Wow. Wow. They really make some of the best sandwiches here at Manolo. It's like just never disappoints. Like this is just amazing. There's so much avocado and so much chicken, and just the bread is so fluffy. It's just it's amazing. And you know what else? They gave us a key, this spicy yellow sauce. So I think you should add some to your sandwich. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's put some spice. Oh wow, that's that's a lot of spice. It's a massive amount. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> your mouth is gonna be on fire. Well, that was way too much. Yeah, too hot oh, yeah. to handle. Oh, I'm suffering here. 
So I have barely finished my first piece and Sam's already done his, or just about. Yeah, pretty much. And what makes this sandwich really unique is that it doesn't have crust. It's similar to the sandwich de miga that we were eating in Argentina as well. And that's just, it's, it's really cool because you're just eating the, the white part of the bread. Yeah. And you can tell that they make their bread homemade here. It's, it's really good quality. Except I have to say these are way thicker than what you find in Argentina. Oh. The sandwiches there are super thin and light. Yeah, these are these are proper <laughs> sandwiches. These are pro this is a proper meal. Yeah. So I had to pack up half my sandwich in order to make room for dessert. But the good news is that now we can have churros. So have a look over here. These are the regular churros, so it's basically this long strip of deep fried dough with a little bit of sugar on top. And we also have these special ones, which are filled with manjar blanco, which is quite similar to dulce de leche. And that's not all. We also got hot chocolate so thick that Sam just calls it sauce. This is chocolate sauce. It's not even hot I chocolate. I call it chocolate sludge. Sludge. Chocolate sludge. <laughs> but look at how thick it is. It's so rich. Ooh, let's dig in. All right, show us what we came for. So we're going to start off with just the regular churros here because it is perfect for dunking in the chocolate sauce. And I don't just dunk it. I drown mine in there. Look at that. It's he drowns it. I drowns drown it. it in chocolate. Drown it in chocolate. Look oh how much my. chocolate there is. Look at that. Oh, so hot too. <laughs> this is what we came for. <laughs> oh yeah. And what really makes it is is the is the chocolate, the hot chocolate. Because it's so thick and so rich and creamy. So you are going for the premium one. Oh yeah. Look at that. With the manhar blanca. Dipped in chocolate. Seriously. That, does it get any more decadent than that? I don't think so. <laughs> You've got so much chocolate covering it that you can't even see the manhar blanca. Mm. That combination is just spectacular. And this is fresh out of the fryer. Seriously. The filling is still ooey and gooey, and then you've got the chocolate and the sugar sprinkled all over. I just love this. I really do. <laughs> I wish I could get this for breakfast every single day of my life. But I probably wouldn't be very good for my health. You know, Sam, you haven't noticed, but I'm eating this very quickly, so you better get yours fast. <laughs> so this is a fun part for you, Sam, isn't it? Yes, the churros are long gone, but there is still a little bit of that amazing chocolate sludge left. So there's no way I'm going to leave this place with any of that left. Let's not waste chocolate now. It's like the best hot chocolate you've ever had. And then some. Alright, so time to do the math. What's the price point for this meal? So it came to 80 soles and so that's basically just over 20 US dollars. But it's amazing value when you consider it. Yes, yes. It's amazing value when you consider that we had two massive sandwiches, a drink, two different kinds of churros and hot chocolate. So we are leaving here very full. Wanna show us your belly? <laughs> <laughs> Ciao.